Sometimes you just need to take the slips out and bowl defensively. And you also need to be careful with your computer's defense as well. If you need a VPN, go Nord. NordVPN.com forward slash Kimber to get a two year contract with a discount plus four extra months and gifts in some markets. It's completely risk free with Nord's 30 day money back guarantee. The link is in the show notes. So put in some dot balls and turn them into maidens via NordVPN.com forward slash Kimber. Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 45 of the Footmarks podcast. I'm your host, Behram Kazi, who you can find at Def Mango on Twitter. And with me is Jared Kimber, who you can find absolutely everywhere. And our title for this episode is Mapping Out the IPL Teams. And as that title suggests, we'll be ma- mapping out the strengths and weaknesses of each of the 10 IPL teams based on their performance from last season. And we'll be taking averages, strike rates, and economy into account. And Jared has worked out a ratio for each of those things as per the phase of the game. So Jared, why don't you give our listeners and viewers a bit of a lowdown on how all of that works? Yeah, I, I was actually, I was asked at very last notice to work in the PSL one year. Hmm. And uh, like it was like a week and a half before the tournament and, and a team contacted me and said, can you be our analyst? And I was like, uh, yeah, uh, but like I haven't been following the PSL. Uh, and they're like, no, it's fine, it's fine. And the whole thing fell through, or I, I got another job. I can't remember what happened. But what it meant was is that I had to learn very, very quickly who was good at various things um, in, in, in a shorthand way. And so I was like, oh, I need to, I need to work this out. So I came up with this idea of team maps, and obviously we've done a few videos on them now. But it's just a real visual representation of what a team, whether a team is good or whether a team is bad, and. They've gone through many iterations. Um, used to be obviously that batting was big and bowl and and good bowling was small. Then I was like, oh, that doesn't. It's, we don't need that. Let's just make them all big. And mm. um, originally it was probably fifty percent economy and fifty percent average for lots of things. And then I was like, uh, that's not how. I... So then I started working out on algorithms. Then we then then we did ratio. Mm. And so so we've kept changing it. But yeah, the basic idea is that y- you can have a look i think i'm trying to remember who it was it was rcb and uh csk for this tournament you could just say they played very different kinds of cricket right Mm. and in an instant you could put them together and work that out and be like this team is good at this and this team is good at that um and the opposite the opposite if they're not very good and it was that that's why we started doing it and they're a lot like they're a lot better now than when we started but that that's what I'm trying to show people. This team is good at middle middle overs batting, and this team is good at death bowling, and this team is terrible at um, spin bowling or whatever it may be. And 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 you know, visually in a heartbeat, you could see it, and it's quite helpful for things like the auction. Yeah, um, is you look at the auction and you just go, oh wait, wait a minute, this team's not very good at spin, and they just bought four fast bowls. <laughs> yeah, well, you guys can go have a look at good areas where you can visually see all of that mapping. We obviously won't be able to show that to you over here in this podcast. But can, can uh, you hear it? Can you hear the mapping? Yeah, you cannot hear the mapping. But uh, let's kick this off. Uh, let's start with the defending champions, the Chennai Super Kings, first up. And, uh, you know, they're pretty good all over. And you'd expect that because, you know, they won the last IPL season. But they have uh, struggled with their middle overs batting. Uh, in their previous yeah. season. And uh, while they bowl a lot of spin and bowl spin well, they, their scoring rate kind of drops when they face spin. And do you think the likes of Daryl Mitchell, who they've acquired this season, and, and maybe Moin Ali on occasion can fix that? Yeah, I mean, so so they did a couple of things, didn't they? They Obviously, they're not going to have Devin Conway available to mm-hmm. them uh, until what until the end, we think, maybe. Is that right? Am I, yeah. am I remembering he- that correctly? He might be um, missing the entire season, actually. Uh, it's possible, right? Yeah. So, so, so best case scenario, he'll, he'll come at the end. Um, and so, you know, they've given themselves Daryl Mitchell and Ratchet Ravindra. So two overseas players who, uh, you know, we would both assume can play spin. We're not, we wouldn't say that either of them's, you know, an expert or anything, but they certainly look like uh, they know what they're doing when it, when it comes to that sort of stuff. So... You know, straight away, you you have a look at that and you go, okay, well, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, they weren't playing spin particularly well, um, and they went and got uh, overseas players who could do that. I would assume that part of the reason their record against spin is not particularly good is just that the the 
if you make your wicket so helpful mm. for spin bowling, it means, you know, your players are going to struggle a little bit more. I mean, think of India and Test Match cricket, right? Yeah. It's exactly the same thing. So so I think there's an element of that as well. But then when you look at the the records, it didn't quite match up. Like it was it was too far in in the in that one direction, right? Of um uh sorry, I'm just trying to get them up in front of me. Yeah, it was too far. Like so the the bat the batting um uh against spin was too weak compared to how well they're bowling against spin which means then you're in danger of course of another team turning up who can bat quite well against spin um and uh cashing in uh, um against it occasionally so you know if you're at home what you really want to be able to do is you want to have a wicket that slants towards batting team bowling or spin right those are the three things that generally teams try and do if you have a wicket that is slanted towards spin but your batters aren't making any runs against spin. You're losing that advantage that you're trying to do. So yeah, Daryl Mitchell and Ratcham Ravindra make sense w within that um, as something to uh, you know to fix that issue. Right. And uh, if we look at their power play batting in you know the previous IPL season, they were better than any other team. In that graph, they're like pointing towards the edge of the circle with respect to power play batting. But they've, have you, as you've mentioned, lost Devin Conway to injury. Uh, but, you yeah. know, in Rajan Ravindra, they might have just found someone who can do that job for them. I mean, based on his IPL debut where he scored 37 or 15, it seems like they've got one solid option for both this season and the future. So can we expect them to maintain that level of power play batting brilliance? Uh, I mean, I don't know if any team could do uh, their level of power play Brilliance. I've got them as seventy-seven percent better than <laughs> um, than average, uh, in, you know, than everyone else in the league. So no, they're probably not going to do that, right? But in some ways, Ratcham Ravindra um, is a better. Uh, it, it's a better partnership. You've kind of got one player who can play long and another player who can cause, you know, who could score really, really quickly. So they can say to Ratcham Ravindra, "Go crazy," and also. They have the option of Ratcham Ravindra or Devon Conway moving into the middle order if one of those, you know, who, when when there is fitness. So, yeah, I don't expect them to have the same level of power play that I did last time just because I don't expect anyone to have that level of power play. Mm. But I do, I can see how there is something there that, you know, that that can continue to show that uh, that they make runs. I mean, again, if you go back to the fact that these are spin wickets, you should you should be able to score more in your power play if if you're taking away um, uh, you know any help off the pitch for the seamers. So you can again, th there's a couple of factors involved in all these things. All right, then on to the Delhi Capitals. They failed heavily with the bat last year. You know, all through each phase, and they don't seem to have done anything about it this year either. Of course, Rishabh Pant is back, which is good news. But Harry Brook made himself unavailable due to personal reasons. And then they've got Tristan Stubbs and Shea Hope, who don't boast heaps of quality. Now, they also acquired Jake Fraser McGurk as Harry Brook's replacement, but he is largely untested, particularly in these conditions. And they didn't play Prithvi Shaw in their opening game. So, what are Delhi doing? <laughs> yeah, Prithvi Shaw is probably the, the oddest one in, in everything you've just said there, but I, I can't help you there. But yeah, they went out. It's clear that they needed probably two batters that they trusted. Um, and, you know, Rishabh Pump was going to help their batting. So let, let's say he comes back and he averages 30 with a strike rate of 135, which I think is a perfectly reasonable thing to think that he can do, right? That, that just gives them a, a sense of steadiness. And so maybe they thought Harry Brook was the answer. But Harry Brook is not a certified um, IPL player yet. Mm hmm Shy Hope is not a certified IPL player. Fraser McGurk is not a certified <laughs> IPL player. Um, I mean, Tristan Stubbs is not one, right? So, so you are left with a certain point of going, okay, you, you're putting a lot of faith in a guy coming back from a major injury, and then you're putting a lot of faith in one big star that you paid a lot of money to who's not particularly made that many runs. So for me, it didn't make sense. Like, you, th that's when you... You know, like Daryl Mitchell was 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 available, right? And mm -hmm. and Ratcham Ravindra was available. There were other guys. If you're going to take punts, um, uh, that that you could have done. Travis Head was another one. So if a few you want other to take players punts, that I, which aren't Richard. Hey, exactly. <laughs> so there's there were the other players who were in the auction, overseas, and you know, and and the, you know, there's always a chance of making a trade domestically as well. Um, you know, they have such good bowling. They could have traded a decent 
backup bowler for a, a decent sort of batter as well. You know, th those sorts of things are available to them. And they kind of went in a really, really odd direction. Um, so I'm, yeah, I'm a bit, I was a bit perplexed looking at their, their lineup. Yeah, come to their bowling and they failed miserably in the in the death overs last season. And considering how they don't seem to have anyone, maybe barring Kuldeep Yadav, of course, who was really good in the first game as well, took two for 20 in four overs. He seems like a threat, but they've lost to Shan Sharma to injury, you know. And uh, I mean, I think it's safe to assume that they're screwed when it comes to their bowling and they'll be heavily reliant on Kuldeep Yadav. Yeah, I mean, the, the problem is, so I... I think I might have done this on one of the scoreboards already. Like, at what? How many wickets does Cool Deep need to take for them? Right? Mm. Like, it, it suddenly feels like it's an awful uh, lot of wickets that he would need to take for you to be to, for you to be feel comfortable with with where they are. And um, you know, if that's the case, like, if, I don't know. So if you look at it, they've got Ishan Sharma currently injured, but also not going to help that death issue anyway. Mm. Fully fit, Unric Nokia, absolutely fine. Is he fully fit? Yeah. Um, fully fit, Lungi Ngidi. We I don't know if we've seen the best of him consistently in the IPL, but certainly he's a fantastic bowler. Then you've got, uh, what is it, Khalil Ahmad, um, mm. uh, the, you know, uh, a bowling seam. There really isn't, like, it's not a a bowler deep um, lineup, you know, just, just looking at that straight away, right? So you are thinking to yourself, well, who, if Kuldeep Yadav can take 25 wickets, what else needs to happen? And, you know, Jai Richardson injured, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, part of this is that there's a lot of, there is a lot of luck in the injuries and they haven't had a good injury run, but it's hard to look at that squad and go, well, they haven't really fixed batting and they haven't really fixed their, you know, their issues with their bowling at the moment. Um, and they're reliant on, like, let's be really, really honest. Even if you say that Anrik Nokia and Jai Richardson are A-grade level talents, and Anrik Nokia certainly is, and Jai Richardson we don't know yet in the IPL just because he hasn't bowled in it enough, but he struggled when he has. I, I think he is that level of talent. What are the odds that both of them are going to be fit for two months? Hmm? Right? Like, so there's just little questions like that. They just don't seem to have assembled a team to fix their problems, but also just... They haven't really assembled a team um, where, I don't know, I, like Khalil Ahmed and Mukesh Kumar, are they, wh wh where, are, are they good enough to be number one seamer and number two seamer along with one international player? You, you know, it's, and last year, if I'm not mistaken, the most wickets were taken by Mitch Marsh. I mean, there's new the new bouncer laws in. Maybe he takes a lot again. But I think he went for 50 runs in the first game the other day. Like Mitch Marsh doesn't, you know, if he was captain, wouldn't wouldn't trust his bowling. Like it, it's just also it's just someone who could get injured. Messy. By the way, Mitch Marsh. Again, so it's I don't know. It just to me, it just looks like an odd setup. It, it looks like one of the weaker squads, and and by a long distance, one of the weaker squads. Yeah, for a team which has a punter as their coach and Rishab Pant as their captain, uh, they've taken a punt on all the wrong people, it seems, <laughs> at least in middle overs batting and, and uh, the bowling department. But let's move on to the Gujarat Titans. Winners of IPL 2022 and runners-up last year. They're pretty good overall, as one would mm -hmm. imagine, of course. And their batting holds up, but they've lost Hardik Pandya. And that is quite big, right? And they aren't the quickest scoring team in the power play. Would that suggest that, you know, alongside Shubman Gill, should they perhaps promote someone else up the order ahead of Saha? Because Saha has been a good run accumulator, but he's not someone who can just go bang, bang, bang. Uh, I mean, they try and use Saha. I'm trying to, I don't know what his strike rate is, but I mean, they try and use him as a, I mean, enforcer is the wrong term, but you know, uh, as someone who whacks it a little bit, right? And he as kind of does. Who, accidentally hits fours versus just speed Bumbra. He also did that, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, and you know, they've never fully committed to him. Um, and, and, you know, they've even had Matthew Wade in ahead of him at times. Uh, last year, the, the, the kind of, it felt like the idea was he's supposed to, not pinch it is the wrong term, but get them off to good starts. But if you look, he's never had, he hasn't had a year since 2019 where he had a high strike rate. Mm -hmm. Um He's not being that kind of player. If if he was like a Rahul Tripathi type player, mm -hmm. 
I would be like, okay, I understand that. So, so yeah, I, it's not, it's not perfect when you look at it, that, that kind of power play batting and, uh, the rest of the game, they, the rest of the innings actually do okay with batting. So it really is that, that top order that is their bigger issue. That's le- I, I would say that's less of a problem only mm. because it, you know, there's, you've got the impact sub now. Um, yeah. and if you've got a strong middle and death, you can get away with it, but it's, if, if your, if your top isn't strong, you're always leaving yourself open to two and three wicket, you know, collapses. Hmm. Um, and I think that's probably their biggest issue looking at them at the moment. And it, if you think, if you think back, that's probably why, um, uh, Hardik was, um, knocking the ball around, right? Like for, hmm. uh, for you know, so much of, of just that, you know, that's why he became uh, an anchor is because he didn't feel all that safe with the, the team as it was. Yeah, I'll challenge you over there because even Please. though Gujarat have defended, a, you know, a relatively low total 169 with the ball recently versus Mumbai, winning a game that they had no business winning, uh, you know, sure, they boast a really good spin bowling duo in Rashid Khan and Sai Kishore. And those guys came good versus Mumbai. And in the pace department, while they've got Mohit Sharma's cutters and slower ones available at the depth, I mm-hmm. don't think they're really strong when it comes to, you know, having a formidable new ball pairing. And I think that could be their Achilles heel. Um, I mean, it, that's that's part of the issue. I, I don't disagree. I, I mean... They're, they're a really interesting team. If you look at them, they're essentially great in the, in the middle overs batting, great in the middle overs bowling. They're great in the death batting and they're great in the death bowling. They're not a particularly good batting team in the power play. Um, and they're bowling in the power plays. Okay. Um, it, you know, some of this is, uh, is just the way that team has sort of come together. But if you look at their bowlers, like who's their best power play bowler on, on their, on their list. Josh Little, perhaps. Mm, yeah. Um, uh, Spencer got this? whacked, you know, outside of the death. Yeah, Umesh Yadav is someone who's past his prime, right? Yeah. Shami's yeah Umesh, not Yadav, Umesh Yadav, when he has a good year, fine, but he has a lot of bad years. Mm. Uh, Spencer Johnson might be, like he honestly might be that bowler. Mm. Um, but you look at that and you do, you do think to yourself, well, there isn't, it isn't like, uh, there's anyone there that you would automatically think is the is the right kind of bowl. So Umesh Yadav last year had a bowling average of 189, <laughs> right? And we put him in. We we've listed him as our third, hmm. right? So they haven't fixed that issue. I really like the way they bowl in the middle and the back end. And there's hmm. nothing about uh, nothing that I've seen here that t- takes me away from that. But yeah, at the at, at you know at the top in both batting and bowling, they're not particularly strong. So it means that Shubman Gill has to do an awful lot of work and then the middle order obviously have to come in. Um, and it means that Mohit Sharma and Rashid Khan and maybe Spencer Johnson have to be all pretty close to their best for big mm. parts of the season in order to get them over the line. That's a lot of pressure on four players, if we're being honest. Mm. Yeah, but I wouldn't put it past Rashid Khan to kind of be the cheat code he- that he is and and win them a couple of games on his own. And Sai Kishore, based on whatever I've seen from him thus far, I've been really impressed. Uh, anyway, let's move on. And, and of course, yeah, Muhammad Shami not being there really impacts them. I, I do believe that. Right? It's not It's not ideal, is it? Yeah. Anyway, next up, we've got the Kolkata Knight Riders, who were 27% worse than the average team last year when it comes to power play batting. Now, this year, Phil Salt has replaced Jason Roy for them. And I'm glad that Phil Salt has gotten an IPL gig because he recently scored, what, 200s versus the West Indies in those T20Is. And then Rebanola Gurbaz is also an option, but he's warming the bench currently. And it would be hard to field both of those players in the starting 11. Do you think that with the resources that Kolkata have, this is an area they can improve on this year? It's a good question, actually, because it's the resources that is the issue, isn't it? Mm. I, I, I'm not sure that they're in a situation where I feel all that comfortable about them. Um I mean, in having Phil Sol and Gobaz, and also they've been batting Nitesh Rana down the order. Mm. Um, he's a tr- tricky one because I don't ever really know where you go. Obviously, not having Jason Roy um, caused some issues, although I think Phil Salt was a direct replacement, wasn't he? Yeah. And Phil yeah. Salt has done well to earn that spot, I feel like he yeah, should be yeah. an IPL player. But, you you know, they had... Thunal Narayan batting, opening the batting in the first game with a batting average of 4.3 this year in T20 cricket. Uh, 
Venki Ayer, Nitesh Rana, I think they're both good players, but are they kind of elite top order batters? Uh, so if Phil Salt doesn't work, right? I thought he batted fine in, in the first game, but if Phil Salt doesn't work, what's, what's plan B? Is it Venki and Nitesh Rana opening the batting? And is that going to scare anyone all that much? Um, so, yeah, it's a bit, it, it doesn't feel like they've massively solved that issue uh, for me. I don't, I don't know how you feel. I mean, I based on what I saw in the first game versus the Sunrisers, Raman Deep can hit really well. And then Andre Russell, he said that he's going to play like a UFC fighter or something. There was a statement along those lines. And he is, you know, hitting sixes that same way and has had a really good year for the West Indies as well. So I feel like if Andre Russell has an MVP year, which he has had, in two of uh, the previous IPL seasons that he's played, mm. maybe that could bail them out. But uh, you know, yeah, I'm not ball, worried about that middle. It, I, I, don't, I mean, yeah. there. I mean, they're, they're, but Rinku Singh, Ramadan, um, yeah, Rinku Ram, Singh, yeah, uh, you know, Andre Russell in current form, they could bring Shafane Rutherford in. You mm. know, um, you, I, I, I like some of that. You know, sort of middle orders form that they can do. The issue is, well, how often Andre Russell? has to come in early, right? <laughs> like, yeah, you know, that, that, that's what it comes down to. Shreyas Aya has to, Shreyas Aya kind of has to back quite deep in this side as it's currently um, set up. And, you know, he failed in the first game. That wasn't an issue at all. I, I thought they seemed to be coming out and trying to score quite quickly and put pressure back on the opposition. Um, it, that didn't work in the first game. But yeah, I just, if Phil Salt doesn't work, uh, I really, really do worry about this side a little bit. But if Phil Sold has even an average season, I think that, you know, if him and Trey so I can both have average seasons, they just need to get to that, you know, the, the hitters, essentially. Um, you know, if they can be par or slightly above par when they get the hitters more often than not, I think they're okay. Yeah, uh, Phil Salt the other day uh, smashed, I think, Marco Janssen for three sixes in an over. But then wickets fell at the other end and that kind of slowed him down, right? So... That's the yeah. thing. Like, if you want to get full value of Phil Salt, he needs like some stability up top with his partners. But anyway, with the ball, they don't do well in the power play either. And uh, while their spinners do well, they struggle facing spin, so they can't particularly, you know, uh, prepare turners uh, at the Eden Gardens. And uh, the other day, KKR nearly blew it versus the Sunrisers at the death. Mitchell Stark, the most expensive signing in IPL history, right, twenty-four crores. He conceded 53 runs in his four overs and went away for 26 in his final over at the death. Those are massive issues. Uh, without Sunil Narayan, that bowling, uh, if Stark is out of touch, looks toothless. Yeah, it's an interesting one. I mean, it, Sunil Narayan, um, uh, Suya Sharma and Varun Chakravarti give them three spinning options mm -hmm. in, in most games, right? And, you know, I think w with that in mind, I think that's a... A decent way to start, right? Like, um, uh, but as you said, if you can't play the spin, then there's no real point in having a spinning wicket, right? Like, it it, it needs to go in more than one direction. So, uh, if if their batters are, well, I'm just having a look now, their batters are fourteen percent worse than everyone else against spin at the moment. Having those ex extra ball, uh, having having those pitches turn isn't going to work, but. If you've got those three guys and you've got Mitchell Stark and we've very we've seen a, a tiny little bit of Hashit Rana at the moment, mm. but he certainly looked promising in his first game. Yeah, that's that's five really good options, and then you've got on, Andre Russell um, as your all rounder, right? And you know, worst case scenario, Venki can bowl a couple of overs um, as well. So so there are options there, but if not, if their batters can't make runs against spin, like is is that going to help? It'll help Shreyas Iyer and Nitesh Rana, from memory, is a good player of spin. Probably Phil Salt's not going to want to play on wickets that are turning sideways. Yeah. Andre Russell, probably not going to want to face wickets that are turning sideways. So it, it's, I think it's a really, really interesting one what they do from here. Yeah, I would like them to go three overs from Stark in the power play. And Harshit can bowl two at the start and two at the death. Of course, Harshit Rana had a great game, but he's a newcomer. You expect him to go for runs every now and then as well. And then through the middle, the spinners can bowl. Like Narayan will be consistently frugal and will get you a wicket here and there. Suya so yeah, Sharma uh, is a wicket-taking option. 
And uh, Varun Chakravarti just seems like a shadow of the dude who did so well in 2021. Yeah. So there are issues, but there is a bit of hope as well if Harshit has a great season, if Stark turns things around. So yeah, I mean, all hope is not lost, but this is a team with major holes in it. No, definitely. I think that's the, that's the best way of putting it. It's just, it's hard to feel really confident with it. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Lucknow is uh, the next team that we're going to discuss. And it's a team that did poorly with the bat last season in all phases. They have the same batters this year and they have lost their season opener chasing 180 odd. Uh, they do have some quality players though, don't get me wrong. You've got Quinton de Kock, KL Rahul, Nicholas Puran. And, uh, you know, conventional wisdom suggests that we can expect to see an improvement. But based on what we saw in that first game, you know, the batting isn't really, I don't know, hella promising with respect to the, you know, names that it boasts. You know, they were about 9% worse than average with their batting mm. uh, when when you have a look at it uh, in, in the last tournament. And, you know, you go through and what they have is a lot of... So, obviously, Kyle Roll, Quinton de Kock, Devdutt Padakol, Nicholas Puran, right? Mm. It starts really good, but kind of everyone else on their list is an all-rounder. Yeah. So, you know, they've got Gautam, they've got Huda. Uh, they got Mayers, they got Krunal Pandya, they got Marcus Stoinis. You know, th so there's a lot of guys there that, I mean, Stoinis is probably m a bit more, and Mayers maybe. I'm maybe, sure Mayers. maybe if JL drops Stoinis for Mayers and plays Mayers in the top order, that fixes some things. Maybe. Yeah. But, but so you go through there, and, you know, that, that top four, Kale Rowell is probably going to bat too slow at times. I think Quentin DeCock's a really good player, but I'm not sure he's massively a consistent match winner. Hmm. Dev Dot Padakal, um and Nicholas Perrin might be the two most interesting players that they have there. Hmm. And, and so th there, there is something to be said for, for all of that. But is that, let's say it works, is it a par batting lineup and maybe slightly above, right? Like hmm. if everything works perfectly. And the problem is, you can't have a par batting lineup and slightly above when... Who, who's their best bowler? Who's their best bowler? That's a really good question. Um, Ravi Bishnoi? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? So 23-year-old leg spinner is their best bowler. Who's their second best bowler? Uh, now you're really pushing it, Jared. <laughs> I really have to think about this one. Um, yeah. Mohsen, I mean, maybe? Maybe. I mean, mm. you know, um, um, it, it's... it's it's he wasn't too obvious. impressive in the first game, but he's had some good games in IPL seasons uh, of yesteryear. Oh, yeah, 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 exactly. And so, so you know, you, you look at that and you do think to yourself, well, how many times are they going to be ahead of the game, hmm. right? How many times are they going to be in a situation where you think to yourself, the bowlers have put them, uh, all the batters need to do is be par. And I've just said that, all things considered, you you would suggest that their batting lineup is probably more of a par batting lineup, hmm. you know. So so you know, um, uh, Amoshin Khan bowled. What was it? He uh, in twenty twenty two he took a bunch of wickets at fourteen. Last year he took no wickets in fi only five games at thirty five. Hmm. I don't know what the real bowler is, which yeah. which one which one is which, and you know, as I as I've just said, like you look through that. They've they've like they've gone for um, uh, Shamar Joseph, right? Hmm. Untested. We don't we know don't what know. he would do. Yeah, right. We have and then they also have no Naveen, but Naveen can go for runs, right? So I think Naveen's a good bowler, hmm. but I'm not sure where I fit him in this list. Shiva Mave, I again, I like Shiva Mave as a bowler, but he doesn't look as good now as when he first started. Hmm. Um, Yash Yash Takor, you know, hmm. you can. Kind of take him or leave him. It's not, there's there's not a lot here that suggests that this team is, has threats on either side. Now, Puran is the wild card here because yeah. Puran is going to bat slightly higher in the order than Aiden Markram or David Miller or um, Andre Russell, and is currently batting like those guys. Right, mm. so you can get maybe he will win you some games, but the other day he was not out and didn't win them the game. So yeah. I, I just. It, I, I look at this squad and I do think to myself, well, how do they win games? And, you know, and as it's currently set up, it feels like a team that is going to go six and eight, right? Mm -hmm. They're not going to be horrible, but they're also just not good enough on either side of the ball to put pressure back on consistently unless 
Perun or QDK or, or mm. DevDot Particle, and, unless one of them just has a freaky season, mm. right? And if we do see them losing early wickets, the other problem is that KR role doesn't factor in then. Yeah. Because we know he'll bat long, but we know what he'll do. He'll go into his shell, and so he won't have the impact. So the top four, if it works exactly as it should on paper, QDK, let's say QDK makes 30, right? Mm. Uh, sorry, average is 30 at a strike rate of 139, 140. Mm. That allows KRL to bat the way he wants. Um, then DevDap Patakol can come in, um, start to hit the ball around with Nicholas Perron to follow. That is their best template, and I'm still not all that comfortable with it. And that's not even their only issue, right? Uh, when it comes to bowling, uh, the power play bowling is where they have suffered the most. And uh, very recently, after their first game, KL Rahul made a statement uh, that uh, he doesn't think anyone has cracked power play bowling just as yet, which isn't particularly inspiring now, is it? I mean, I, I think that's why they signed David Willey, right? Like, hmm. to be fair to them, I think they kind of knew that that was an issue. But hmm. yes, you're right. I mean, you, we just said their best bowl is probably Ravi Bishnoi, and mm. we're not sure who their best seamer is. I don't. I can't see how they would be sure. They've, they've got a kid from the West Indies that no one knows anything about. Mm. Um, they've got Navin Al Haq, who I think is a very good bowler. I'm not sure he's ready to be the main bowler in mm -hmm. an IPL um, lineup. You got then you got people like Yash Takur and Shivan Mabe, who we're kind of hopeful for, and then um, Moshe and Khan again that we're kind of hopeful for. It's you know, and, and they also, I'm pretty sure, they don't have a spinner that you probably want to bowl in the power play. Yeah. That's right. Maybe Krunel. Maybe, you know, maybe, mm. maybe we could give Krunel that, right? Mm -hmm. What you said before is really interesting. You could actually pick Kyle Mayers, get him to bat in, in, you know, in the top order, but tell him just to whack him. As mm. almost like, but tell him he's bowling, he needs to bowl two overs a game, and he bowls the first over and the third over. And, you, you know, that it doesn't make the power play bowling great, but maybe that gives, you know, that the, the combination of those two things together works for them. But it's not, it's not sexy. A lot of people complain that I'm not a former cricketer. I said that I don't really know the game. Well, you know what they can't claim? Then I don't know desks. I've been using desks for years. I'm a collector of desks, old and new, and I'm sitting on a new one right now. I'm the Don Bradman of sitting at desks. So when I tell you that the E7 Pro next generation height adjustable desk from FlexiSpot is legit. This is like Michael Jordan talking to you about sneakers. This desk holds 160 kilograms. It is as stable as anything I've ever seen and it has under desk cable management. But really the main skill here is that this desk rises and falls at the push of a button and it moves super quick. And it has so many settings that remember your favorite heights. It really does it all. And I could not recommend the E7 Pro from FlexiSpot anymore. Even though I am currently sitting on one of FlexiSpot's BS12 Pro multifunctional adjustable upgraded fabric ergonomic chairs. My butt and computer have never been happier than when using one of FlexiSpot's products. So get over to their page right now for big savings. I mean, the Super Giants have uh, put a lot of faith in Naveen Al Haq because he also plays for Durban. So maybe he's that star bowler that they're looking at. But while he is incisive at times, I'm not convinced with the economy. But I mean, Lucknow again has a lot of issues. But I think when you said six and eight, that just sounds about right to me. And they have been that team that somehow make it to the playoffs. But that's their ceiling for the time being, yeah. so it seems, right? So let's see if they can uh, better that. Coming to Mumbai, uh, last year they were an above-average batting team but struggled at the death. Given their loss versus Gujarat, it seems like that hasn't changed because they completely botched that chase. Uh, they needed, what, eight runs and over in the last eight overs with plenty of wickets in hand and lost yeah. that game. Uh, maybe, perhaps, if they tweak that batting order, it could help them. I think Hardik batted too low. Him coming in at seven doesn't make sense to me. And then they kind of got the matchup wrong with Tim David. And, uh, I mean, Tilak Verma didn't have a good game. Sky is someone they'll miss a lot. Yeah, I mean, you, you look at those three plays that you just mentioned, though, and they shouldn't have a problem hmm. um, batting in the death this year, yeah. right? Like, that, that shouldn't happen again. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to say it was a freak occurrence or anything, because, you know, that's probably not fair. But um, I, I can't see how th that is a consistent problem with them. Um, I wonder how many times Daryl Brevis will, will play and face that many balls and only score that many runs. So there was probably a couple of freak occurrences, um, all things considered. But yes, so I think altogether, I'm just having a look at here now, 
that I've got the, their overall rating from last season was was one, so par, hmm. right? And and when you look at it, uh, they're they're in a position where um, they are a slightly above average batting side and a slightly ab below average bowling side. So the batting, you, you're right. They probably need to learn how to make more runs at the death. I'm not worried about that because if you if you have if you put Hardik into with Tilak Varma and, hmm. and Tim David. I'm pretty confident with that. What I am l less confident in is that they will be able to fix the many, many bowling problems that they have um, all the way through their innings. They, there's, yeah. there's not a zone where they bowl good. And that first game, they got an all-timey performance from Jasper Bumrah and yeah. still lost against yeah. a team that really underscored anyway. And that's a very fair point. I do believe that if uh, somehow World Cup Rohit turns up, that'll fix a lot of problems for them automatically. I agree. Yeah, uh, because he seems to be batting at another level when you know he goes all out attack from the word go. But with respect to the bowling, yes, they were a below average bowling team last season. But just getting Bumrah back is a big plus, right? And he performed brilliantly, as you said, three for fourteen in his four overs in the first game. How frequently he'll be able to deliver that is a question. But him partnered up with Gerald Kodzia in the middle overs and the death, I think that is something that could really win them a lot of games. And I, I just expect them to have a better bowling year just based on that information. Yeah, those two together, I have absolutely no issue with. I have, I'm a bit more concerned about them getting Mapfaka um, from South Africa because he's 17 yeah. and he's probably not going to be bowling for them this year. Mm. They've still got Arjun Tendulkar on their list, who quite clearly is not a full time bowler and, you know, he's not going to go through. Luke Wood is, is there as well. Not a not a great start from Luke Good. One great over, one horrendous over. But not then, the end of the world. In his defense, he bowled one over in the power play. He should be bowling two or three. I, I, no, no doubt. But if he's mm. going to go for thirty runs in the death, um, he, 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 there's no, there's not much he can do in the power play <laughs> to help. Nuan Tashara is interesting, but I just think, like, I think Nuan Tashara is a little bit of a pro, not a project player. Luke Wood is a rookie in at, at this level. Arjun Tendulkar is probably not up to it, and there's a 17 year old bowler. That's that you know, and, and uh, I don't know if Madhushanka is coming at all now. I don't think he is. Yeah, is not he? sure. But I mean, Madhushanka and as that's well. To be sure, fair to them, lots of promise had, over there. But and sure, yeah. left arm angle and everything. But again, Madhushanka is new to the scene. So I'm okay. I reckon I'm, I I rate Madhushanka so highly that I I don't have an issue, and I wouldn't have had an issue with Berendorf. I just don't know if they've really replaced Berendorf. I don't know if you can replace Berendorf and Matashanka with Wood, Tashara, Tendulka, and mm. Mafaka. Is it, how do you pronounce it? Am I getting it right? Mapaka. Gwena Mapaka. Mapaka. I think yeah, so. Yeah, I think, that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's I think it. you're right. Yeah. Mm. And, and, and here's the thing pace bowling is not their issue. Yeah. Spin bowling is their issue, right? Mm. What, what was um, the guy's name? Shams Malani? I don't see Shams that guy Malani. surviving. Oh. Well, you say that, but what a fantastic name. I hope he plays for <laughs> absolute decades. Um, you know, P.S. Chawla and Shams Malani. And then they've, they've got is Gopal, I think, is the other one they've got in their squad. Yeah. They do have Mohamed Nabi as, as a backup Ooh. to all that. But you just look at that and you go, there's a lot of guys there that are, there are a lot of guys there. You wouldn't mind if they're at the back end of your rotation. But mm. some of them are going to have to be higher up in the rotation. And, yeah. and that's where the issue comes. Can Boomer and Kotsia on their own do enough mm. damage? Maybe. I, I mean, you know, if Kotsia, if they both have worldy seasons, then that that goes a long way. But uh, it, it's not it's not screaming to me at the moment that this is a great team. I think Piyush Chavla should be like the torchbearer of this bowling attack. Uh, take Bumrah out of it and that's what it looks like. No disrespect to Piyush Chavla. He is still, you know, playing at this level, uh, but he doesn't scream athlete at all. Anyway, let's move our focus to the Punjab Kings. They were flat out horrendous uh, batting in the power play last year. And their games thus far suggest that they haven't particularly, you know, done anything to solve that problem. Shikha Dhawan is an experienced campaigner, but he is a bit of an anchor. And that's what it seems to be right now as well. They, they could be 2-0. Hmm. They could have been. And, and, and I don't think they've played well in either game. And yeah. I'm not sure I'm waiting for them to suddenly play well. Hmm. Um, uh, look, if, uh, this is, my concern is that Shikha Dawan and Johnny Besto should just be a better opening combination, right? Yeah. Um, 
you but know, Johnny's I, I, getting run out and dropping catches. He's had a terrible time in India. <laughs> I mean, it's not ideal. Um, but 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 you know, you you do look at their team and you do think to yourself, well, if you go if you're going to go with that much experience at the top, um, and it's still not working. Uh, <laughs> I don't really know what you're going to do. And then is it Prub Simran? Um, mm. They've been using it first drop. Yeah. You know, he he's going to... He, I think he's okay, but he looks a little bit limited to me uh, overall. And I know he, he did okay last year. He did he did what I would call the sort of Rahul Tripathi job of averaging mm. probably mid-20s with a high strike rate, which I don't mind. I, I, mm. I For a local player, especially a local player with the second skill, um, uh, Jitesh Sharma... Uh, you know, they've got him in the lineup as well. Livingston's uh, there. So, he can really amp it up if he wants to. Yeah. Uh, you, they seem really dependent on Curran and Livingston making runs. Mm. Yeah. Um, Livingston has done that before. I'm not sure he quite looks like that player anymore. Um, but when when Bairstow went out and then Prob Simon went out, Shika didn't seem to have that gear to be able to score the way he had when he, you know, a couple of years ago when he got back into it. Um, and he's also only playing the IPL at this point, right? That's also an issue. Yeah, I don't. I, uh, I it just, I, I have some issues there with some of that, uh, and perhaps someone like Riley Russo can can help fix it. But I always worry when you have to fix. You know, does Riley Russo come in for best though? Perhaps. I mean, Riley Rousseau had a terrible PSL. You mentioned how Lucknow could bring in Willie. That makes sense. Willie had a great PSL and he's fantastic with the new ball. Riley Rousseau shat the bed big time. He had a worse PSL than Sean Masood and Sean Masood was terrible. But Livingston had a bad, has had a bad year as well, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. And then still made runs um, in the first game. I, know, I think he failed in the second one. But uh, I don't know. How do you feel about the batting? I just, I just, I don't know. It, it doesn't feel like it's about to come right. It's a flash in the pan sort of equation for me. Uh, some days, someone will bail them out by going at like, I don't know, uh, crazy scoring rates. Like Livingston has that gear. Sam Curran has that gear. They have the players. Even Prab Simran at times, show sure, he's limited, but he can turn it on, right? But on a consistent basis, will those guys come off? That's where I have my reservations. So, so this is my issue. I think they've set their team up so that Shikha Darwan averages 45. And a bunch of other people around him whack the ball. Hmm. And uh, last, uh, I'm just having a look here. So last year he averaged 41. The year before he averaged 38, 39, 44. So he's kind of done that hmm. over and over again. But the issue with that is if he's if not putting a lot of pressure back on the yeah. opposition. So when, I think it was the second game that they play, when Livingston was there, it felt like to me that Livingston was playing, instead of just waiting for the ball to be in his area, it felt like he had to put a lot more pressure on. Um, and then the next batter did that. Then Shikadawan ran down. It just, I just don't feel it's repeatable, I suppose, is the mm. best way of putting it at the moment. And again, best case scenario, their batting probably gets back to par, right? Mm. I, I, unless Livingston has one of the all-time great seasons, um, I, I can't see them being an above par batting lineup, right? Do but you see on... Besto turning his fortunes around? Because it's been quite uh, gloomy in the life of Johnny Besto ever since uh, getting run out um, by a pacer, off a pacer. Honest, honestly, <laughs> I have given up even ever thinking about Johnny Besto. And when when he will, I can never pick when Johnny Besto is about to be in form or about <laughs> to lose his form. So I've kind of given up even trying. But, but, but you know, you go through Shikha Dawan, Besto, Harpreet Singh, Prab Simran Singh, Jitesh Sharma, Riley Russo. You throw in maybe Karen batting up the top of the order and Liam Livingston. Is that batting lineup really, is that an above par batting lineup, even if you can fit all those guys into it? So if Besto and Livingston found great form and Chika Darwin kept doing what he was doing, there may be a slightly above average batting side. Would you, will you give me that? Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd say okay. that because they have the talent over there. Whether or not they build enough chemistry to kind of make that work on a consistent basis, that's where the issues start. But I think All on right. paper, it doesn't look that bad. All right. So now, they're bowling. Yeah, and, and their bowling was bad in all phases last year. Let's not forget that. And for a team that bowls a lot of pace, they 
suck at it. You take Rabada out because Rabada will have some good games. He was pretty good today versus Bangalore as well. Took like two for mm-hmm. 23. And I think Dhawan used him well. He bowled him out by the 13th or 14th over. I think that is the way to go with Kagiso Rabada. But apart but from that's him... also why they lost the game in the end. Hmm? Yeah, you could say that because uh, Arshdeep is not having a good time. Harshal Patel is a one-season wonder. And then uh, Harpreet Bra, the spinner, the left-arm orthodox spinner, he is, you know, their best bowler currently. And the only one who's been offering them some sort of respite. But other than that, that is a bowling attack that when you look at it at first glance, you're like, okay, if Rabada doesn't come off, they're going to go for runs. If I'm not mistaken, didn't um, Harpreet Bra didn't even bowl out in one of the games because they yeah. didn't like the matchup. So Harpreet Bra in two games uh, is uh, three overs, one for 14. So didn't bowl out because Karan bowled a solitary over. And the second game, he's the only reason they took it deep versus Rajasthan, uh, sorry, uh, Royal Challenge, Challenges Bengaluru. And should have won that game in the end, but Harpreet Bra uh, delivered figures of two for 13 in four overs. So you're not going to get that performance out of him every game, right? I so here's my question: They need Sam Curran or uh, um, Ashdeep Singh. They probably need both of them to step up. Hmm. But if both of them step up, they get in each other's ways. Yeah, and they're basically the same bowler. <laughs> kind of. Right? I, mean, I think Sam Ashdeep Curran... is a sl- yeah slightly better, but they're basically the same. They're both left arm, um, you know, swing bowlers. Um, I, do, I just, I don't see how bringing Sam Curran in to that situation is helpful because of the way that it, it has a follow-on effect onto Arshdeep. But at the same time, they're probably thinking to themselves, well, Arshdeep actually got hammered last year, hmm. right? Because on paper, Sam Curran, Arshdeep Singh, and Rabada fixes that power play bowling, right? Yeah. On paper. Should, and I yeah. mean... With Sam Curran, when they spent bank on him, they thought they were getting a death bowler because of the T20 World Cup that he had. Now, yeah. they don't want to give him a single over in the death. Even today versus RCB, he kind of leaked boundaries towards fine leg. So that's not a safe option. Harshal Patel, again, uh, maybe he has a good game here or there, but I don't know. I've never been convinced with him. And today he received a lot of tap. Ashdeep has not been at his best. This is a huge issue. <laughs> yeah, so Harshal's... I think he's just going to be one of those bowlers who when the ball um, uh, has revolutions on it, he's handy. Mm. But but the other issue is, because we're dancing around, maybe the more important thing is that Harpreet, they don't seem to want to actually bowl all that much, right? Mm. <laughs> as, as it works at, at the moment, which, okay, fine. They've made that decision. Their second best spinner is um, Rahul Chahar, who is incredibly young Rahul Chahar. Um, mm. but Maybe there's still something in him, but he spins the ball the same way. They yeah. both they, so in, there was a point in the first game I think where I thought, well, they can't use any either of their spinners here because they've got two guys who were spinning the ball in the same direction, and there's a bunch of left-handers out there. And you have a look at Rahul Chahar last year; he had a, a bowling average of 48, hmm. right? So, I, again, let, let's give best case scenario: they get to be like five to ten percent above par for their batting, which. I don't see it at the moment, but I can, I can, it, it might fall, fall in. Is their bowling ever going to be um, a plus, right? Like as it's currently constructed, no, right? Yeah. Like Rabada, Rabada and uh, Harpreet Bra are going to have to do, have incredible seasons. Hmm. Um, and Harpreet, he's a left arm finger spinner. When was the last time a left arm finger spinner dominated a whole year of the IPL? Like it's, hmm. you know, Jadeja doesn't do it, yeah. right? And he plays a much friendlier wickets. I just, I don't know. I, I don't see how it's going to work um, looking at this. Yeah, I mean, let's see how long Harpreet Bra's form lasts. He did well against the left-handers as well. So that does give he him some promise. He had so far, you're right. Promise, yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, we've talked enough about Punjab. It's time to talk about RCB. So all of you RCB fans who stuck around till this point, your time is now. Uh, they excelled at power play uh, batting last year, right? And... Uh, that seems to have held up this year as well because Faf got a start in the first game. Kohli ga- came well in the second game. And they are a top-heavy team, especially if they play Cam Green at three. Now, you've got mm. options in Patidar and Maxwell in the middle. Anuj uh, Rawat has done well in the first game, uh, playing the lower order. And Dinesh Karthik brought out vintage Dinesh Karthik versus Punjab and finished the game for them. 
facing spin has been a hurdle for them. So do you think that's the biggest issue? I think. So if, if you look at their batting, you, <laughs> the, the biggest problem is that their power play batting is extraordinary. But mm -hmm. by the middle overs, they're average. And by the death, they're terrible. But and they have you, impact sub uh, Mahipal Lomroar, who did well today. So there's that. But if you look at their team, it does feel, doesn't it just feel like the best batter bats at the top and then it just mm -hmm. gets worse kind of all the way through? Kind of does. If they can get Cameron Green to be a first drop with Patadar at second and Patadar and Maxwell interchanging at, at second drop. So the bat, if the batting order worked and you can, on the days when Faf and Virat make runs, you can either use Cameron Green in for the last couple of overs of the power play or use Maxwell um, against the spinners um, early on. I can kind of see how the batting order works, but there's no way they're going to be, let's just have a look what they were. They were 35% better than average in power play batting last year. Then chances are that's just going to regress a little bit, right? Ooh. And if it does regress, um, then you have this this pressure on everything else. And Anna right played two innings, Play poor in one plate, play good in the other. Dinesh Karthik still looks like he can do what he needs to do at mm. the death. I think they should be an above average um, power play, uh, sorry, above average batting team. Maybe, but it's it's really just how far above average I can get. Last year, they were 2% better than average in mm. batting. Surely they should, with this lineup, surely they should be 10% better than, with batting, right? Yeah. And and, I mean, especially because they've got Green and Maxwell mm. who can bowl in their top, you know, five batters. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the batting lineup, right, uh, Faf and Kohli is a solid opening play, uh, a pair. They've also gotten runs and Kohli uh, has himself said that he thinks he still has it. Then you've got uh, Cameron Green and I think he's best suited to bat at first drop. Rajat Patidar and uh, Glenn Maxwell can be extremely you know, effective versus spin. And then if you bring in Lomroar as an impact sub, that gives you Anuj Rawat and Dinesh Karthik along with Lomroar in the batting and you can expect 200 plus totals. But here's the issue. They're going to need those 200 plus totals on a lot of occasions. Because even though last year, if you look at RCB's power play bowling, it's just like CSK's power play batting. It's that good, that better than the rest. But uh, with Siraj and Yash Dayal, sure, they did well versus Punjab. I'm not sure if they've got the best power play or new ball pair uh, in the entire IPL. And they also bowl 45% more seen than the average team. Whereas their seamers don't particularly scream world class. Karan Sharma is their frontline spinner. And yeah, that's my major concern with them. They seem like the Peshawar Zalmi of the IPL, where the batting just has to bail them out every time. Yeah, I, I, you know, this all everything you've just said just gives everyone from um, RCB chills because that's like what they've done the whole time. <laughs> hey, they're, right? they're women once, so that you guys you guys have got that right. Like, so you can you yeah. can celebrate it. <laughs> I mean, there's something to be said of a sort of Lockie Ferguson, Muhammad, uh, you know, if mm. Lockie Ferguson's at full fitness yeah. and uh, Muhammad Siraj partnership should be spectacular mm. um, and should complement each other really, really well as seamers. But if you have those two guys, you need spinners. Mm. Who, who's their best spinner? Maxwell. <laughs> I mean, you laugh, but today I felt like they brought Maxwell on against mm. Punjab um, thinking he was their best spinner. Yeah. Right. And, and he took wickets. And, yeah. And so, I, you know, I mean, Khan Sharma's older than you and me, I think, at this point. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, who's the other guy? The left arm finger spinner, Mike Dugga. Yeah. He's, he's played, um, he, he's new. So we don't know all that much about him. But again, um, uh, <laughs> they had Shabazz ahead of Dugga last year, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, so so Mike Dugga last year had a bowling average of 123. Okay. And so the issue that I would have with that is that that is, he's a defensive spinner, but they already have Maxwell. So does that mean that he bowls to one kind of matchup and Maxwell bowls to the other? But you would have to then say that neither of them are completely frontline bowlers available yeah. to you. And so then your best spinner is, if it isn't one of those two, his Khan Sharma, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's just... It's the same thing over and over again. Now, if they can get a finally a good bowling season out of Cameron Green, hmm. which no one has managed to do in T20 cricket, but with the two I mean, bouncer rule, yeah, he's got more chance. 
yeah, he's more chance than he's ever had before, right? Mm. Um, you know, they're, they're in a situation where it's not too bad. Khan Sharma last year um, took wickets. It just happened to be that they came at 11 runs and over, right? I mm. just... Look, if Lockie Ferguson's fully fit and Mohamed Siraj has had a great season, I'm, I, I'm not anti this, mm. but, you know, watching Alzari Joseph, Cameron Green, mm. bowling bouncers um with with spinners that are second tier it's not ideal right like it, yeah. there's, there's there's not a lot to like from here yeah but i mean hold your breath rcb fans because the batting does seem like it yeah. could bail that bowling lineup out on a fair few occasions and you're one out of two so definitely you know still in contention i feel like it's going to be one of those seasons where rcb are going to be looking at the net run rate when it comes to playoff qualification <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I mean, to be honest, I there's a, quite a few teams I don't think very much of. So I think they're probably better than, at least on paper, as we currently see, they're probably slightly better than luck now, right? Hmm. Um, they're better than the Sunrisers. Uh, they're better than Delhi, than Punjab. You know, they only need someone like Mumbai to get some injuries or, or you know, we weren't that bullish on, on Mumbai. But they're a genuine finals contender. But you might be right. Like... Hmm. It's it's not the most obvious path to um, uh, eight wins, which mm. is kind of where they need to get to, right? And if you look yeah. at, look at their two games, they could be zero and two quite mm. easily, very easily. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, Rajasthan Royals are up next, and for them, middle overs batting is a bit of an issue, and facing spin is a bit of an issue. Now, uh, uh, sorry, facing spin is not an issue, and playing seam is a bit of an issue. Yeah, I got that right. And the other day, we saw that Rajasthan were in a great position after 10 overs, should have gotten to a 200-plus total, and they ended up with 180-odd. And, you know, they slipped. Uh, how can they fix this? What's what's the solution here? Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, they've got bad middle overs batting. Essentially, Butler and Jaiswal are doing all the work. Uh, you need to do so much of the work for them at the top. It's interesting, then, though, right, that they don't have an issue facing spin. But the middle overs batting is what's bad, right? It's, because you, it doesn't you, it, it doesn't make sense, right? It, it doesn't. It doesn't. And, but you you look at their whole lineup, and it does feel a little bit like, depending on let let Drew Perel and Ryan Pirag are uh, question marks, hmm. right? There's no doubting the talent with both of them, but they're question marks. And and so essentially, what you are hoping is that the top three make an awful lot of runs. And then Shimron Hetmeyer is in a good mood. Yeah. Right. And also it it's a lot, it's a shallower batting lineup than other teams because they take five specialist bowlers in, mm -hmm. you know, and that's why they had to use Ashwin in that other position. So again, they are more susceptible to wickets than other sides are. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I, I don't know if, if that had something to do with the middle overs batting, it could have just been that they slowed down a lot. Right, but you know, I'd have to go into the individual metrics to have a look at it. But they weren't they weren't particularly bad at the death. I think I think it's okay. It's as you said, if if it's not spin bowling that's causing the problem, it might just be that they're batting slow against spin bowling rather than mm. anything else. There, I don't know. Uh, and the only other thing that they are negative uh, on is death bowling. Uh, I'm not sure that's going to change this season. Uh, looking yeah. at what they've done here, but everything else they're par or slightly above. So. You know, Mumbai, their rating was one and Rajasthan's is one zero four. So, you know, they're four percent better than Mumbai, right? Uh mm -hmm. based on based on what we saw from last year. Um their middle overs batting should get better. So let's say they go to eight percent better than average. Mm -hmm. They could and bring the in bot Rovman Powell to strengthen yeah. that middle overs yeah. batting. I think having Rovman Powell is quite mm -hmm. handy. And then their death bowling, I'm, I'm trying to remember, did they bring anyone in? Yeah, I'm so Sandeep about. and Avesh Khan did actually a really good job in the game that they won, right? They were yeah, really so Sun, Sun, Sandeep, you're right. Uh, he bowled brilliantly the other day. I, I don't know about Nandre Berger as a death bowler at the moment. Mm. They seem to want to use Trent Bolt early on. Um, Chahal will bowl more in the death for them, especially in home conditions. So, you know, if they can get... If, if they can... If, if Shimron, Shimron in the top order can help them out in the middle, middle a little bit more, and Sandeep Sharma and Chahal can step up in the mm. death, I think that gives them a really good um, chance. What, one thing I would say is last year they were, what's their bowling ranking here? They were about average last year with the ball. Yeah, 3% better than average, right? Mm. 
they should be 10 to 15 percent better than average Oh, yeah. And right. when you look at that bowling attack, right, I do think there's a lot of promise with the, the new ball pairing of Bolt and Berger. Sure, like, you don't want to... Maybe you don't even bowl Nandre Berger out, right? Because you have Avesh Khan and then Sandeep can come in as an impact sub. So those guys can bowl at the death. Ashwin and Chahal can bowl through the middle. On paper, this looks like a solid bowling attack to me. So I expect them to maybe even do 15 to 20% better. That's what I mean. I, I mean, it, it's, it looks really, really good. They have... Hmm. In the first game they played, they had six genuine frontline bowlers that I think you yeah. would be fairly happy with bowling in the OPI. Mean, some of these other teams were trying to find two and three. Yeah. Right? Pretty much. So if their batting does hold up and anywhere near par, their bowling should carry the rest for them. Right? Um, the, the and, and if their top three all explode and Shimron Hetmeyer has, a, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think of what, because he had a couple of really big years, didn't he? Um, in 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 the IPL, and so yeah. he, I think he does have to. Him and the top three kind of have to combine. Um, uh, so what did he do last year? Thirty seven hundred and fifty two. The year before forty five hundred and fifty three. The year before thirty five hundred and sixty eight. The year before three. Year before that twenty three one forty eight. Anything around thirty at one hundred and fifty, if that top three work. If the top three doesn't work, he has to have another one of these magic gears again, mm. right? But he is; po it is very possible he does that. If he does that, and two of the top three do really, really well, and that bowling unit manages the death better, and the rest of them just dominate, then they should be one of the best teams in the competition, right? right. And that top three, by the way, is Jashasvi Jaiswal, Joss Butler, and uh, Sanju Samson. That is a yep. terrific top three. Yeah, exactly. So... I mean, there's a lot to like about this team. It just feels that the the batting depth isn't there, hmm. and they're gonna. Have, I don't want to say they have to be lucky. I I don't know how confident I would be in them in close games with the ball. Um, I I I love Sandeep, and I like Chahal, but in close games, I'd rather have a real closer at that death. Hmm. Um, yeah. And I'm trying to think if there's anyone in their squad outside of the guys we've named. Yeah, so there is a unless Nandre Berger ends up being a better death bowler than, mm. and, and I I don't know a ton about Nandre Berger. And mm. I, I, has he even played that much cricket not, so far? Not much, no. Not not He's played in... 58 games, right? So yeah. I don't I just don't know enough about him. And and mm. I you know a deeper look might might suggest that he can do that. But he didn't look like a, a great death bowler the other day. Yeah. When I do see Rajasthan, though, I, I look at a playoff team at the very minimum. So let's see uh, if that, it would be. Uh, I, I think it would be a huge disappointment for them if they mm -hmm. didn't make the playoffs. So I think you're 100. percent Yeah. All right, then our last team of the day is Sunrisers Hyderabad, who were horrendous at almost everything <laughs> last year, and this year they've spent all their money on Pat Cummins, made him captain. So they've limited themselves with respect to picking all of the various options of uh, overseas players that they have at their disposal, which are really good, by the way. And uh, they struggled batting versus seam and spin. Uh, but they do have some cheat codes in that team in the form of Heinrich Klaassen, as well as Glenn Phillips, uh, if they, of course, choose to play uh, Glenn Phillips. And considering how they did manage to score 200-plus in that thriller versus Kolkata, we can expect them to be a better batting unit uh, this year, at the very least. Yeah, they were, what were they? Well under, 7% under batting last year. Mm -hmm. And... Most of that was power play batting where they just didn't go anywhere at all. Uh, mm. You know, 26% worse than other teams in, in the power play batting. Uh, just giving everyone else such a huge advantage, right, uh, against them. Have they fixed that top order batting, do you think? Mm, I'm just not sold on the way they kind of go about their team composition. Because if I have those foreign players, uh, if top order batting is a major issue, then sure, put in Travis Head over there, right? Or, you know, when Hasaranga comes back, he's going to fix a lot of their spin bowling issues. Of course, we don't know how long it will take and Hasaranga himself is going through some issues right now with respect to his discipline and all of that. But Hasaranga should fix some stuff. Pat Cummins kind of eats up a spot for me because you want to play Markram, Klaassen and Phillips. That makes a solid T20 middle order. In fact, that makes a dream T20 middle order in contemporary cricket. But they haven't set themselves up to play those guys in tandem and that's their biggest issue as per me. I'm just trying to remember who who's uh, who did they open with the other day because Markham didn't open, did he? Did he come first drop? Who did they there. open? Uh, yeah, yeah, Markham did not open. Uh, definitely not. I, he might have come down at number four actually. 
Um, Superman damn, list. I'm completely blanking out. Who no, opens give me for one them? Second. <laughs> no, no, I'll, I'll find it. I'll find it. I should. I should. I've remembered that one. Um, was it the KKR game? Wasn't it? Well, so, they yeah. did kind of completely like combust up top, and Klassen bailed them out. So, I mean, yeah. So Klassen batted. Sorry, Klassen. Mark batted four, right? So mm. Agarwal, Abhishek Sharma, and mm. Rahul Tripathi. Yes. Rahul Tripathi, I'm a huge fan of, but he's coming off a down season. Mm -hmm. Uh, my my uncle Agarwal as um was the other opener there, and so he is. Was a that? really, really handy bat in T20 cricket not too long ago. I think, but I wonder if handy isn't kind of you know maybe more of where he's going to be. So last year he averaged twenty seven at one twenty eight. The year before sixteen at one two two. So he has had some good, good years, um, but he hasn't had a good season. He hasn't had a plus season since twenty twenty one. Right. Yeah. So you've got two guys coming off a bad season there, and uh, Abhishek Sharma. Who uh, Brian Lara rates very highly, by the way, Abhishek Sharma. He couldn't stop talking about him in commentary. Although listening no. to Brian Lara in commentary is is a bit of a task. <laughs> <laughs> so Abhishek Sharma, I mean, he's been around for uh, uh, quite a while now. So last year he averaged twenty one forty three. Year before thirty one thirty three. So if that's the top three, all right? What's the who's the batter you're most worried about? Is it Abhishek Sharma? Right, you've got two guys off uh, coming off bad form, and you've got one guy who's never really made a lot of runs. Yeah, and I mean, like, as in, hmm. you know, a, a big chunk of runs. Um, he's he's either managed to make some runs, but slowly, or score really quickly, but not make a lot of runs. Um, it, so, and then we go back to my my graphic, and they're twenty seven, uh, twenty four percent worse than everyone else in the power play. Right? Yeah. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna sit here and say they should be 24 percent and worse than other teams in the power play this year. But I'm not willing to say that they shouldn't be at least 10 percent worse. Hmm? Yeah, right? yeah, that makes sense. And I mean, so like yeah, I said, then you get to that other that other bit. So you know what you were talking about. Let's say they have Markram, Phillips, um, and, and um, uh, Clarkson. Yeah, and why not open with Markram? That's an option. Why can't they exercise that? That would, for me, that would make more sense. And then you would use Abhishek Sharma and Rahul Tripathi at, as your number, um, as your guys who would just come in and slog. Mm. And, you know, and, and, and you get them to slog early on if you have to. Um, but yes, I mean, the, the point being, it just doesn't quite fit together, you know, beautifully. You know, players like Abdul um, Samad, probably a little mm. bit too young. You know, Anmol Preet Singh. Travis Head, they can't fit another friggin' overseas player in that top yeah. order. And the only, I don't know if they have another like batting option, right? So, you know, uh, that's not I mean, ideal. Bring in a local seamer for Marco Janssen and bring in one of those batters up top. Bring in Travis Head or Glenn Phillips, right? And, then, and yeah, and then you've got they've got a couple of guys with Shabazz Ahmed and Washington Sundar, who mm. I suppose they could try some fun things with. Uh, if they wanted to, you know, the, the, then, so that's the batting, right? So now let's get to the bowling. They, they were, <laughs> you know, slightly, uh, 8% worse with bowling last year. So I think they were a better batting team than they were a bowling team last year. And, and this is a team that bowls a hell of a lot of pace, but aren't particularly good at it. I think Natarajan was injured last year. He played yep. well in the first game, right? Three for 32. So that's a plus, but I just, I look at that bowling attack and I'm like, You've got to somehow bring Hasaranga in here, otherwise you're doomed. But the problem is that Natarajan comes in, but they're already death bowling's the one thing they've been okay at. Hmm. So it's you know that's kind of where he's going to be at his best. They they were a, not a good uh, bowling team in the power play last year, and if you can't be a good bowling team uh, with Bhuvi Kumar, hmm. that really really worries me. Umran Malik gone. Right, yeah. like they don't. I don't think they're going to trust him for a while. Um, but hopefully, he comes back. Jadev Unakad. No yeah. one's had more chances than, than than him before, right? Yeah. Uh, so when you were talking about local seamers, it, when you've got two, those are two of your seamers. In fact, if this was a red ball team, then having Unakad and Cummins would be helpful. <laughs> Ak Ak that's Unakad is such a good test ball. Um, uh, yeah. first class ball. Um. And then you got Akash Singh, hmm. right? Is is your so so when you said before that they need to bring in a local seamer, Akash Singh uh, bowled uh, six games last year, 
and when it 10 runs and over. Are we talking so, about Akash Deep, uh, who just played a test match? Is this that guy? No, no, no. Oh, oh it's not that guy? Oh, well. No. So, so, you, so you look at that, and you don't even know who I'm talking about, that, which mm, is kind of my point. So, <laughs> so their best player off the bench, their best seamer off the bench, is not really a strong option, right? Mm. The other issue that they have here is with Natarajan and Bhuvi Kumar, fantastic bowlers in different ways, right? And, and they're going to really, really help them. This is quickly becoming a bouncer league. Hmm. And there was a matchup the other day. I can't remember who they were bowling to. And I was thinking, oh, they just got bouncers. And then I looked <laughs> at the two bowlers and I went, oh, crap. They don't have bouncer bowlers. Yeah. Cummins was the only one who could do it. So then that's another issue on, on top of this. And that's just unlucky because that they wouldn't have known that rule was going to come in. And what are you going to do? Trade one of those two guys? Probably not. And as you said, if they can't fit Hasaranga in, who's their Who's their second best spin option in, in mm. that side? Um, I'm just trying to think. Is it Sundar, Phillips, I mean, Shabazz? Yeah, all of those guys um, are like bits and pieces. I mean, Mayank Washington Makandi? Sundar is probably... Yeah, Mayank, Mayank Makandi had a really good IPL season a couple of seasons back, right? He was playing for Mumbai, was it? Back in the day? He's had... A, I think he's had... He's one of those guys that sticks in our head because he had a, has had a good season. I think he might have played for India once as well, yeah. uh, once or twice. Um, last year, he played 10 games and had a decent record. Yeah, I've got, I've got no issues with him. But he's only really had two years where he's um, ever been successful. It's not the end of the world, mm. but if you, put, if you have him as a second spinner behind the Hasaranga, you're like, now we're getting somewhere. Then you do have two leg spinners. Hmm. So that creates other problems. Maybe when you get Hasaranga in though, that's when Washington Sundar becomes more important. Yeah. And both of those guys but, can bat. So that gives them depth. So at that point, that I like that lineup if they can get to that lineup. But your main point and everyone's main point is always the same thing. Once you pick Pat Cummins, you make it very hard to get to that hmm. lineup I've just mentioned. Right. Yeah. So they don't have enough local batting. Right. And they don't have enough, uh, they don't have a backup, uh, a third local seamer, which is fine. Most teams wouldn't have three great local seamers anyway. Um, mm. And they have a player that they have to play regardless in Pat Cummins. And yeah. you look at that team and all those different things that they, they could do, and we've just talked about, um, you know, everywhere else. If Pat Cummins doesn't bowl, it's, it's, they probably have to bring in an overseas seamer. If the, yeah. um, as well, which will be Fazal Faruqi, fine bowler. Again, I don't think he's changing the, this particular side. So they've somehow managed to kind of look a seamer and a spinner short at the same time. Right. Yeah, and there's Janssen as well, but Janssen went for a lot of runs, but at least he can bowl bounces. Yeah. I, I mean, look, good, good Janssen. Uh, I don't know. I don't. <laughs> I, his best ball is as good as anyone, but he's just young and mm. he's not fully developed yet and he doesn't always know what he's doing. Um, but but that's the other problem is they seem desperate to play Janssen, right? Yeah. Which means that they've then got four seamers in the side. Hmm. Wouldn't they not be better off with Janssen getting replaced by Hasaranga um, and, then, and then bringing Washington Sundar into the side as well? But... If you bring Washington Sundar into the side, you're still doing the same basic thing of having a lot of guys in here, a lot of Indian talent who aren't specialist batters. So, yeah, I don't feel particularly comfortable with this team. Um, mm. I thought they were, um, uh, I thought they did well in their, in their first game. But mm. it's, it, and also, when you know that the off field people are rolling dice and then inhaling the dice and then <laughs> farting and then shitting out the dice and then forgetting to check the dice. <laughs> as your tactics how do you do you know what i mean i just expect this to fall apart mm. because they don't know what they're doing and they keep making changes yeah i mean whoever uh you know created that jersey i know a lot of people are loving that orange and all of those designs on the jersey but really missed out an opportunity by not getting frosted flakes to sponsor you maybe the frosted flakes tiger could have been your captain ahead of pat cummins but uh, i actually think <laughs> they should have been like the riddler and made all that design into question marks because that's kind of what we're <laughs> we're saying <laughs> yeah, that's not a bad point at all. Anyway, you guys have listened to 
us mapping out each of these teams. So let us know in the comment section below which four teams do you have early contenders over here to make it to the playoffs. And that will wrap up this episode of Footmarks. If you enjoyed it, throw us a like, share this with your friends and subscribe to both this channel and Jared's other YouTube channel. We'll be back with another episode of Footmarks next, next week. That's all for now. Goodbye.